Hello, welcome to Out There Paranormal TV. My name is Nigel Higgins and this here is Borough Castle in Norfolk. It's amazing, isn't it? Look at it. It's built from like bits of flint. What looks like roofing tile and concrete. Roman concrete. Amazing stuff. Nobody knows the formula these days. They've tried to recreate it many times but never succeeded. And it's what holds this quite amazing place together. And yes, okay, I'm biased because I love history, but I never cease to be amazed by places like this. You would really hope that behind these walls echo some history. The fighting and the bloodshed that took place. Or the everyday lives of simple Roman folk. The soldiers in the fort. And here in the field outside there would have been what they call a vicus. Which would have been a settlement that grew up around the fort to supply the soldiers inside. Can you imagine what it was like all those years ago to be stationed here? The arse end of the Roman Empire. That's what they called Britain because really no one did want to come here. The last garrison recorded stationed here was a unit called Equites Stabociani, a cavalry unit to roam up and down the coastline looking for Saxon invaders. And it's more than likely being an auxiliary unit, they would have been recruited from elsewhere in the empire and sent over here to cold, cold Britain. Yes, imagine if you were a Syrian or someone from North Africa or an Italian themselves, a Roman, and having to come here, and serve here, in the arse end of East Anglia. <laughs> it couldn't have been much fun, could it? So, what do you think we're going to find here? Who knows? There's lots of stories associated with this place. There are tales of a body wrapped in a white sheet that is thrown from the battlements. And like all good Norfolk towers, this one here has got his own version of Black Shuck. A beast with one glowing red eye called Old Scarf. Come howling across the fields, a harbinger of death. If you witness him, then you're guaranteed that either you or one of your family or one of your friends is going to pass away. Well, here we are, Borough Castle. You can't really see an awful lot of it because it's pretty bloody dark here. No lights at all. Um, very quiet, very peaceful. At the moment, uh, Julia and uh, Tracy have just gone wandering around to see if they can pick up anywhere we can sort of deploy later to try some tests and things. Um, Ian's got his high powered microphone out and he's listening to some bits and pieces. He heard some strange things earlier on. He's got a, a VLF transmitter and we were listening to um, strange chirping noises. Uh, if I will try and actually get some of them on tape so you can listen to what we're listening to. Um, but I'll get him to explain what it is again later on so we can all sort of hear what he's listening to. He's very much into sort of um, the radio frequencies and that sort of stuff so it's good to have him on board. Later on I'm going to try calling out in Latin which is the language used by the Roman Empire. I've also got some recordings of people speaking Latin, someone doing the Latin speech. And because eventually this site was taken over by um, Saxons, I've also got somebody reading part of the Beowulf saga in Saxon, the actual part where he um, fights Grendel. So we'll play that and see if we get any reactions as well. It's a thing called Singapore Theory. Uh, you may have heard it called Era Cues on other programs, where you play something that relates to the time period that the, the, the place is sort of related to, I suppose you could say, and then uh, see if we get any response. So, all that to come, but uh, there we go. Castle. Once again we broadcast live on our Facebook group from this investigation. If you'd like to see the videos, they're on the Out There Facebook page for you to enjoy. Our two psychics wandering around the walls, getting their bearings, picking up sites that we can look at later. And then this happened to Juliet. 
Hi okay. guys. Well, I just had something really interesting happen to me. I was literally just walking up. Um, I took some time out to tune in and started walking up the boundary of the wall. And as I was walking in a particular area, I could feel my throat tightening and I was coughing like I couldn't get my breath, like I had something around my neck. Um, my eyes were streaming, my eyes were watering. I did manage to capture it on my phone. Okay, um, my eyes are watering because I'm actually getting quite a lot of restriction um, to my throat around here. And it's really weird. And I'm just trying to walk out in the environment now. Very odd sensation. I'm just walking into complete darkness. Sorry guys, I don't mean to lose you. Um, crikey. <laughs> wasn't expecting that. I'm going to walk back in now and see if I get the same thing again. I'm right next to the wall here. I'm just walking along the wall. Yeah, I'm getting it again. Just backing up, walking out of that space. It would be interesting to know if it was documented, if... Um, any um, anybody had anything tight around their neck, anything restrictive um, while they were here, if any, I don't know, prisoners or anything were strangled. Because um, that really is quite uncomfortable for me. And clearly at the time it was very uncomfortable for them as well. Wow, that's interesting. So early on as well. Um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, bring some kit up here and uh, see what I can uh, pick up. Catch you later. Okay, I've stopped at this point here because it's um, where Juliet was walking along the wall and she got the sensation where she couldn't breathe and something had a grip around her throat. So we're going to stationary, stationary. We're going to stop here and do some calling out sessions to see if we can actually pick anything up. Um, Tracy, did you pick out anything here? How did you get this far? No. Just didn't get this far around, so. Okay, got meters on. Completely flat. There shouldn't be anything here, really, because we are out in the middle of nowhere. There should be really no electronic signal, so. Uh, Juliet's got the K2 out, and that's not doing an awful lot either. Everyone has turned their phones off. We have all turned your phones off, haven't yep, you guys? Yeah. Then we have another mini gas there as well, which is showing completely flat as well, so there's absolutely nothing going on here at the moment. So, set the camera up and we'll do some calling out sessions. I'm going to get um, both uh, male and female voices to call out, and we may try some calling out in Latin as well, to see if it makes any difference. Okay. I'm going to try calling out in Latin. Um, if there were Roman troops in this castle, it's actually a Roman fort, so if there are Roman troops here, they would speak Latin. My Latin is not great. I've written a few questions down. So first you'll get the English question, followed by the Latin. Hello. Salve. I just want to talk with you. Ego, Eustus, volo, loqui, tecu. All right, uh, we're gonna try with a female calling out this time to see if we get um, any different responses. My name is Juliet. Meum nomen est Juliet. What is your name? Cod nomen tibi est. Are you a soldier? Milis s. Are you Roman? Tu Romanus. Do you live here? Hic habitas. How old are you? Cot anos nata es? This is something they call Singapore theory or if you watch American 
um, paranormal shows, they call it ear cues. What it basically is, is you take a recording of something specific to the time period of the place you're investigating, play it to see if you get any response, okay? Um, as we're in a Roman thought, it's quite difficult to get any sort of music for the period, so what I've got is a recording from the game Rome Total War. It's Julius Caesar addressing his troops um, after beating the Gauls in battle. So I'm going to play it through my iPod, and I've got a Bluetooth speaker down here, and we'll record it and see if I actually get any background noise with it as well. So, let's go. In case you're wondering, it's in Latin. It put and say no, says the Aquaris, out meliores. Arbitrail, spetorum mortis, readily. See you in Cebu. Ups propinquab exercitu crudelissimo impatiedu. See you in Cebu. Uns quisque est un fiet eros. But que eros puela semper potetu. Ag not perum di. Stop lights. Got seven dust, do you really? <laughs> <sighs> Did you sense anything? That's flashing. What's flashing? The meter at the top. Got the K2? Mm -hmm. Oh, crap. Oh, yeah, yeah, did you yeah, see yeah. it? Yeah. This one not too orange. If you made the K2 flash orange, can you do that again, please? Let me just try something. Bear in mind that I am using Bluetooth. Right. Okay. So it could have set it off. Yeah. Excuse the noise. No, it's not that. No. Nope. And it's too far away from there to pick up that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just play that music again. Maybe was it during the music alley that it was flashing? Yeah. Okay. Play the music again, Nigel. It's not the response you would expect, is it? Yeah. Perhaps it was in in the actual uh, Rome bit. Well, no. What I'm saying is, when that finished, maybe it kind of brought something through. When the actual Rome Total yeah, War yeah, finished, you yeah, want to hear some yeah. more. Do you want to play the yeah. ending again? Well, what I've got, I've got some, and I've got got a guy speaking in Latin, so we can okay. try that. Yeah. We'll play this again mainly because. Um, K2 meter flashed. We've not got, and no one's got their phones on. I am using a Bluetooth device, but it doesn't set the phone off. No. Uh, it doesn't set the um, meter off like a phone would. So I've got someone here speaking conversational Latin. He's actually saying some horrible things like, I don't like you and you're not very nice and all this sort of stuff. Oh, so let's see if that garners a response. More Latin. Commentarius puerorum de quotidiano sermone corderii. Housekeeping. Cur non veristi solum cubiculi? Cur non veristi solum cubiculi? Cur non veristi solum cubiculi? Cur tu istum laidis? Cur tu istum laidis? Cur tu istum laidis? Nai tu homo malus es? Profecto iniquissimus es qui sic illum tracte es? Pro 
Profecto iniquissimus. No. Doesn't like it, does it? Doesn't make any difference. I heard laughter. Did you? Yeah. Do you know when? Non enem teriritat, it sounded like. Non enem teriritat. I'll have to look and see what that actually says. I was hoping it would pick it up on the camera. I'm still recording. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll see when we play it back, so... Mm. Well, I've got the recorder on the, well, the first, the second session, I put the microphone with this box mm -hmm. and recorded it on my phone, but all the way through I've had the old analogue cassette recorder going, so oh, with right. a microphone on the wall there, so. Wonderful. So we've got both analogue and digital then. I've got this one going. You've got that going as well. Oh, it's fantastic. Been going for 42 minutes. <laughs> Lovely. Brilliant. Your one's still going there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ace. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll try one more thing with this um, Singapore Theory Year Accused Luck. I've actually got someone reading out Beowulf versus Grendel in um, Old English in Saxon. Um, after the Romans left, this area was taken by the Saxons, or the Angles, in fact, who invaded across the sea from Germany. And um, this is the language they would have spoken, and this is one of the tales that would have been told around campfires. They would have. Um, I don't know what they call them, they got some sort of, we used, to, we used to have druids and people like that, a bard that would tell a story and Beowulf was a very popular story, he's a hero from old Saxon legend so you may know about him versus Grendel, Grendel was a creature that um, all the other soldiers tried to fight and they killed them all but Beowulf took it on so here we go. Sadly, hmm. not with really an awful lot happens. So. No, oh, very yeah. flat. <laughs> it's interesting though. That was getting me sort of drifting off. <laughs> it was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, mm. Interesting. Though. But I had the feeling uh, when I was drifting off listening to that that there was more people here than just us. <laughs> There's actually someone gathered around. Yeah. Yeah, she was sort of thinking there's actually a party yeah. gathered around listening to it. That's how it was actually done. Oh, right. I mean, they would sort of gather in, they'd, they'd have a, a big hall where everybody sort of gathered around and they would have a storyteller come and tell the stories. Yeah. And they would all sort of gather around and listen to them. So it makes you wonder whether or not you've actually gathered some, yeah. I think some souls or whatever here is. around to listen to it. Yeah. And it's coming again now. Um, I got the, the cold chills like when something's here. Yeah. And I haven't had it all night and I know we're out in the open and everything, but I'm really well padded and as you can see. And I got the chills inside <laughs> going up and down. Yes, you felt, yeah. Actually, and I yeah. thought something's here because I can feel it. So there, there's something here, but it just doesn't want just to respond. Here, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unless, unless of course we've picked it up. We may well have done, we it's a case of going through what we've got and seeing yeah. if we actually managed to pick anything up, see if anything responds to the questions and things that we yeah. ask. So it's my thing's been going for nearly an hour. Yeah, so we've done a lot of recording tonight. What do you want to do next? 
uh, move somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Just give that a back to walk. Can do. Okay. And probably try the go back on Facebook. Have a chat then. Have a chat with yeah. them and then. Okay. Try something else. Try my mm -hmm. spirit box. Spirit box. Yes. Okay. I it's forgot we had that. A wrap. With nothing much really going on in the castle grounds, we decided to move ourselves down to the river to see if we could pick anything up down there. It's an interesting walk down the stairs in the dark. We've got a couple of bits of kit that we're going to try out down this way. Dowsing rods and the spirit box. And this is what we did. Okay. Well, we've got, Ian's going to do some dowsing for us. We actually came down to the river because one of the guys on our live feed said it might be a good idea to come down here because it's spooky. I can tell you what, it's a hell of a bloody job to get down here, especially for our poor Tracy with her dodgy old legs, but we're here. <laughs> so off you go then, young man. Let's see what these things okay, do. Well, if there's anything that can make these rods move, and I'm the sceptic, so I don't know, and it's a bit windy, but not too windy, so I'm assuming it's not going to be the wind. I'd like to see... Can you show me what yes is? Oops, that might be yes. Okay. And I suppose no is going to be the other way, isn't it? Like that. We'll is it try going it. To do, oh, what's Ask. no going to be? Okay, can you show me what no is going to be? Uh, I'll go on. Okay, so it's the one on my right hand. Hmm. Or on the other one. So they flew apart for yes. And they crossed for no. And they kind of crossed for no, but that could be just random muscle movements, the wind, wishful thinking. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> well, you never know. We're, you know, no, you have to cover all the options. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. So they move about at random in my hands. There's, a, there's something that we can yeah. prove. Right, what's the next thing? Ask, I'll ask it what you want. Will the pub be shut when we finished? <laughs> Definitely yes. <laughs> oh no! Oh dear. <laughs> when we listen to the EVPs, will we hear anything later? Oh, definitely yes. Mm. When I mean anything, I mean, are we going to hear anything on the on the recordings? Oops, let's just get them steady. Are we going to hear anything on the recordings that we weren't aware of while we were listening live? Uh, bit of hesitation there. Mm, maybe yes. Not very clear. Not convinced. Right, okay. <laughs> End of part one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we've moved down to the uh, river and we've set off the spirit box. It's Tracy's spirit box, it's a PSB7 box. Basically what it does, um, it skips very rapidly through radio channels uh, at a very sort of fast rate and the idea is that you can actually sort of pick out noises in the noise, in the mess, that uh, a voice is speaking to you. Um, you've got to try and siphon out what alleged the voices are from all the radio chatter in there and uh, my sceptical head makes me think they don't actually work because audio apophenia will make you pick out noises that you want to hear. But saying that, when we used this thing over at uh, Backton Woods, it did come up with some very interesting responses. So, I don't know, jury's still out as far as I'm concerned, but you form your own opinions. So, here we go. I'll turn it around and you can see what it does. Just skipping through the channels at the moment. I'm on FM and it's going through at 100 ms, is that milliseconds or something? Maybe something. I think so, yeah. yeah. Something like that. Anyway, um, let's give it a try. Um, hello, is there anybody here? Hello, can somebody speak to us? Hello. 
and slavery stations. If there's somebody here with us, can you just come through clearly with your name, please? Nothing. With the weather now conspiring against us, feeling cold and just a little damp, we decided to call it a night, so we made our way back to our vehicles to warm up and discuss what we had experienced. To be honest, not a huge amount happened on the night. There were just a couple of items that I wanted to mention. First off, Let's look at Juliet's rather strange sensation of being strangled. Undertaking some research, it was discovered that the Romans used a form of strangulation to execute prisoners. Especially if the prisoner was an enemy leader of some sort. The whole execution ritual taking place in front of an audience. Did Juliet somehow experience the final death throes of a Saxon leader as he was executed in the fort after being captured on the raid by the Romans? The other item I wanted to touch on was when we conducted the Singapore theory experiment using a voice reading Beowulf in Old English. Tracy became aware that during the reading she felt like a lot of people had gathered quietly around her and it seemed that they were listening to the story too. These old heroic tales were often recited to a crowd of avid listeners, all concentrating as a teller told the story. Had we somehow gathered a crowd of Saxon spirits, all keen to hear Beowulf's tale told again? A most unusual experience. So there you have it. Not one of the most active investigations we've undertaken, but certainly worth the effort on the night. Even if it was just a little bit soggy. For us all. So thanks once again for joining us. And please, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, where you can keep up to date with all the things we like to do when we get out there.